In this seventh lesson about deism, we will talk to a deist again, and he will be our addressee. Now we ask the deist, Every being in this universe is like a divine book and enables many names and attributes of its owner on it to be read. Let us read a flower together. Understand when you read it that our Creator created every being like a book and wrote many of His names in those books. Since a flower is created out of nothing, it shows Allah's names, Al-Halik, the Creator, Al-Mubdi, the Originator, and Al-Mujid, the Inventor. It shows the name Al-Mujamil, the Adorner, with its beauty, and Al-Muzayin, the Adorner, with its adornments. It shows the names Al-Razak, the Sustainer, Al-Mukit, the Nourisher, and Al-Wahhab, the Giver of All since it is given sustenance perfectly and its needs are met. It shows the name Al-Mulawin, the giver of color, with its color and Al-Musavir, the shaper of beauty, with its shape. It shows the name Al-Hakim, the perfectly wise, with the wisdoms placed in it, and Al-Hafis, the preserver, since its program is written within its seeds. It shows the name Al-Muhi, the giver of life, with its life, and Al-Mumit, the giver of death, with its death. It shows the name Al-Sani, the artist, with its art, and Al-Mukamil, the perfecter, since it becomes mature gradually. It shows the name Al-Fatah, the opener, since it blossoms, and Al-Muhawil, the transformer, since it is transformed from one shape into another. The being that creates this flower definitely knows it and hence shows his name, Al-Alim, the knower of all, who also has power to do anything and shows his name, Al-Qadir, the all-powerful, with it. It shows dozens of names like these. This flower is virtually a book, a bench and a mirror of Asma al-Husna, the beautiful names of Allah. We will not read this book any longer not to keep it very long. Otherwise, if we tried to read it properly, we would talk about it for hours. As it is known, if a book is incomprehensible, it is necessary to find someone who understands and will explain it. If a book is incomprehensible and if there is no one to explain it, it will be useless to write such a book. You have to understand from our earlier contemplation that every being is a book. However, we cannot read the writings of this book. Maybe you have heard, for the first time, what we have just told you. Now, our question to you is as follows. Who will read us these writings on these books of being? Who will teach us? The mind cannot understand these writings on its own. Since it cannot discover, we need prophets to read those writings and teach us. There are two ways. Either prophets will be sent and the prophets will read us the divine names and attributes written on the books of beings and other writings. Or the writings on those books will remain there without being read. Which one do you think Allah prefers? Does he show consent to the books he has written not being read? Does his wisdom allow it? Would he have created the beings like books if he had not wanted them to be read? Is it difficult for Allah to send a prophet and books? Why should he leave those books without teachers and make them meaningless? Look, we have just read some of a flower. However, you have probably never done such a reading before. It is because you do not listen to a prophet's lesson, but we listen to a prophet's lesson and believe in him. Hazrat Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Quran that was sent down to him taught us to read like that. If we had not listened to his lesson, we would have thought like you, that a flower was a simple being. 
we would have looked at its outer beauty and smelled it only. However, as you have just seen, it is not just a flower. It is like a divine book and a poem. Since every flower and every being is such a book and many divine names and attributes are written within them, teachers that will teach us the writings in these books are definitely necessary. Those teachers are prophets. The sending of prophets is as certain as the existence of the books of beings.